Hey Logic Language Learners, I hope you're all well. So this is a very quick video talking about how brand names become part of language and how it's actually a really useful uh, concept to get hold of. Um, so before I talk about the examples in French, which are brand names, which have just become common parlance for certain words, let's look how this kind of happens in language. So we'll often use, so um, Google, okay? Google is a brand. It's now kind of become a verb. So if you would you say, I'm going to look on Google, or would you say, I'm going to go and Google it? It's kind of become language, okay? Um, you, you obviously... You know, there's a time in your life several years ago where that uh, that word um, wouldn't have meant anything to you. The innocent days before the Internet. <laughs> no, where that word wouldn't have meant something to you. But it's now become, you know, um, like to tweet. It's it's that's part and parcel with an actual process connected to um, a product. So in theory, would you still use the word Google if you just went on a generic search engine? If you went on like Safari or something and you, you looked it up, would you still say Google it? Possibly not, but it's getting there to the point that it's almost synonymous with the activity, which is actually pretty a sign of well bloody domination, isn't it? Um, so the, the same thing happens with other things. So, for example, in English, the, the vacuum cleaner. OK, we we use um, we will often say the Hoover because that was a brand that was just really largely dominating the market as opposed to the vacuum in English. In the UK, we'll often say the Hoover. Could you Hoover for me? As in that will become the, the verb. Um, uh, and for example, in, in, in Spain, it always makes me laugh. So Rimmel, as you know, is a makeup brand. Uh, those of you that don't know, I think in the States it's owned by Maybelline or I'm not sure. But um, anyway, Rimmel London and uh, Rimmel is an entire range of makeup in the UK. Um, and uh, but if you say a Rimmel in Spanish, it means mascara because um, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm not wearing mascara. Um, why? It, because it's the it was the brand that was that brought that product to the market and therefore it lingers. So you've got a couple like this in French, and I'm going to be adding to this video underneath as and when I use them and think of them. So keep an eye out on the list underneath. I will be adding to this as and when. So it won't just be the ones in this video. So, for example, uh, a carcher for the hose. So you've got a word for hose, you know, le tuyau d'arrosage. Tuyau being like tubing, uh, piping, whatever. Arroser being to like water a plant. So le tuyau d'arrosage, but we'll just say le carcher because it's just a not it's just a market leader, a brand leader, you know. So I know for a fact that I would call a hose a carcher in France rather than a tuyau d'arrosage, even if it weren't a carcher brand. It's kind of taken over. Um, uh, uh, L'eau de javel, javel, javelise. I've even heard is to bleach, not bleach as in lighten the colour of, which would be décolorer, but just you know to hygienically sterilise. Um, you know, yes, you could say sterilisé, but the product which was invented by a company in that region and was known as eau de javel has become synonymous with bleach. So l'eau de javel, bleach. Uh, so in theory, then, the bleach should be spelt with a capital J because it's from a brand name. Le sopala. Le sop is basically kitchen towel. And again, sometimes it's written with a lowercase s. Sometimes it's written with, a, uh, you know, a capital S, an uppercase, because really it is a brand. But it's just become generic. So le sopana, uh, you know, uh, uh, could you pass me a bit of kitchen towel, a bit, bit of kitchen roll, a bit of kitchen towel? Um, uh, what other ones have we got? Un beak, un beak, a beak, B-I-C is the brand name. So obviously we've got single bladed razors. I think they might do double bladed razors, um, which are OK as long as you use avocado oil. Trust me. <laughs> Back when I used to shave every day, you can use a little cheap little two blade, one blade razor. If you use avocado oil, it's amazing. It's amazing. You don't need to spend loads of money on 45 blade Gillettes if you can use a bit of avocado oil. Trust me, it works. Um, uh, so a beak in France is the go-to word for a, a ballpoint pen, a biro. Yeah, je crée avec un beak. Yeah, absolutely fine. So we've got beak, we've got carcher, we've got, um, uh, um, yeah, tarmac. So tarmac, the guy's name, macadam, yeah, tarmac was like a hybrid word of tar and macadam, which is where the word comes from, you know, like the, the, the asphalty style, you know, stuff that we put on the road. 
So in France, that'd be, you know, if you're talking about tarmac, you'd say le macadam kind of thing. Um, what other ones have we got? I'm seeing them happening all the time. So we've got Google, Googlize, although I don't really hear Google very much. Um, normally, if a brand name starts to become part of a language, it will be masculine and the verb form for it will be an ER ending verb. And I see the same thing in Spanish, actually. It will normally become masculine and it will be an AR, which is the most common form of Spanish verb. So it's kind of like these things become very simplified when they enter a language. Um, uh, anything else I can think of? Yeah, I'm seeing them happening all the time. So, for example, the, a coffee machine, une machine à café, I'm hearing people saying, oh, le Nespresso. It's like a pride in the fact that you've got an espresso machine or something. Um, uh, I have no connection with any of these brands <laughs> and I'm not endorsing any of them. Although I do bloody love an espresso machine. So an espresso, by all means, get in contact with me because you do make good pods. I'd also like to give a shout out to a Café Pod, which are Nespresso, which are who are is a group of people or the company which is a uh nespresso machine compatible uh series of little uh, uh the, the, you know the, the 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 pods that you pop in the um my brain is gone the capsule do you call them capsules in english the capsule de cafe the stuff that you put in the machine when you turn the thing down oh my god luke <laughs> english is hard <laughs> yeah the the word is, is evading me, but the thing that you put in an espresso machine, uh, yeah, so ca uh, Café Pod uh, are some friends of mine. I used to teach them. I did their French marketing. Uh, they, they're Nespresso compatible. So they'd be like, we don't want Nespresso to be, you know, synonymous with the product. But there you go. It's entered the language. So in other words, have a little look out. Keep an eye out. If you see a word that thinks that looks a bit of an odd word, it will often be from a brand. All right. So uh, I hope this has been useful. So if nothing else, you know now the word, know the words for bleach or de javel, uh, un bic, a, a ballpoint pen. Um, as a, uh, you know, you could say un stylo, you can say une plume if it's a fountain pen. Who writes with those nowadays? Um, uh, it used to be in French that if you were learning French, everybody always used to say la plume de ma tante, the, the fountain pen of my aunt. It used to be the standard way for Brits to learn, um, you know, uh, the possessive uh, with, with a name. In France, the equivalent was Brian is in the kitchen because they all seem to learn um, that uh, expression, which is kind of cool because my friend Brian always is in the kitchen making amazing stuff. So you now know the word for tarmac, macadam. So all it is, this isn't about these words in particular. It's about just being mindful and keeping your ear out for how brands become part of stuff. I've heard people instead of saying the mixer, I've heard people say Le Mooninex and all this business because of the brand. So it's just a nice little habit to get on top of. All right. I hope you're well, guys. Do click like, do subscribe if you find the, the, the channel interesting. And I'll try and remember the word for the stuff that you put in an, uh, a, a copy machine. Capsules. Capsules sounds weird. Pods. I think I'm being dumb. Anyway, um, I will speak to you guys soon.